soil You might think dirty But flowers are pretty And they grow in soil When you think of soil Healthy soil is the key to everything, really. Having the ability to grow good plants is important, but also providing a sponge-like area for that water to soak up and reduce the pollutants in it is part of slowing the flow. Out we went, gay as larks, wearing what the well-dressed gardener should wear. The first trowel full of earth was like a ceremony, more wonderful than any other soil. We really felt sorry for them. Thought we'd be good neighbors. Tell them what they're up against. Give them a little friendly advice. Folks, I said, you've got about the worst soil of anybody this side of the Mississippi. Water drainage is so important, both for plant growth as well as for rain events where you'd like water to move through the soil so it doesn't move off site and take sediment and, put, and potential contaminants with it. So that's what your plants are up against, I told them, bad soil structure. There's many factors that can cause a soil to be, quote, bad. One of them, of course, is compaction or restrictive layers. When you have restrictive layers in the soil, including hard pan, water cannot drain through the soil. It runs off and it carries particles off site. Sometimes those particles have pollutants or pesticides or fertilizers, and they will move right with that water off into our waterways. When the storm finally stopped, we went out to see what the damage was. The rain had torn deep gashes in our soil. It had flooded the plants and stayed there in muddy puddles. That's when we found out that rain can be either a blessing or a catastrophe, depending on what your soil is like. Knowing your soil texture will tell you about how good the soil is at draining. Take soil in your hand that's pretty moist, and you squeeze it and form sort of a ribbon, and if it extends out beyond an inch or two, then you probably have a lot of clay in your soil. If it doesn't form very far and it breaks off, you probably have a lot of sand in your soil. Most gardeners should consider getting a soil sampling tube of some kind because you can stick it in the soil, pull out a core of soil, and you can tell what kind of restrictive layers there might be below the ground. The soil surface may be plenty dry looking, but if you take a core sample, you might find that there's water built up onto your restrictive layers. Organic matter is important because it improves the tilt, so the workability of the soil. If we add organic matter in the form of soil amendments, then it, it increases the aeration in the soil, it improves water penetration, and it improves root growth as well. Organic matter is the dead and decaying plant material, as well as earthworms because they feed on organic matter, they feed on bacteria and fungi in the soil, and their castings create glues that hold the soil really nicely together. We want to make sure that there's life in the soil, the biology. Um, that's the microorganisms, the bacteria, the protozoa, the nematodes, the fungi. This is what is sort of the party in the soil, and you want to keep that party going. It means less work for you, because it's helping the plants get what they need. That's really, the plants are in charge. They communicate to the soil, I need a little nitrogen today, I need a little phosphorus, and it's the bacteria, the life in the soil that brings it to them. Ideally, you would add the organic matter and mix it into the soil about four to six inches, maybe even a little more. Even a little bit will help because there are earthworms in your soil that'll move that organic matter around over time. After the ruinous rain, the earth slowly dried. It hardened and cracked. By now, we were completely disheartened. With unprotected soil, the raindrops hit those soil particles and form a crust on the surface. When that happens, water does not drain through that very well, and then it forms gullies, and it's the erosion of the soil. A mulch is a material that's laid on top of the soil surface to protect the soil surface, to prevent weed growth, and to keep soil moisture in the soil. It prevents evaporation. It's really important to have all your soil that's potentially erodible covered 
with mulch or plants. Ideally, we would not use any pesticides on our plants at all. We would like to use the least toxic products, not only for the benefit of the beneficial insects, as well as because we don't want to kill the organisms in the soil either. You can go a long ways in reducing pest problems by starting with healthy soil. When nutrient cycling and all that organic matter gets into the soil, the organisms create soil structure. We begin to get really healthy soil that water can just get right through down in. The roots of the plants can go deeper, they can get water easier, and we just, again, we have good plant health. We don't have to use as many pesticides or any at all. We've never put a pesticide on this yard. I have not fertilized it since the very beginning when I adjusted a few fertilizer elements here. That's four years, no fertilizer. Everything's still healthy. And slowly but surely, the garden I dreamed of has become a reality. The hard, disheartening earth that resisted all our efforts has become friendly, workable soil yielding new miracles with every changing season. Soil provides the nutrients plants need to live and grow. It's made of rock lace, silt and humus. And don't you know, you touch soil, you might think scummy. All but beets are yummy And they grow in soil Yeah, you better wash them But flowers are pretty And they grow in soil Don't you just love them? Yes, trees are climbing 